in almost every checkbox you can think of, the Eastman is just better, except two. And they turned out to be more important and more challenging than I thought they were going to be. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike, and today we are going to be comparing two wonderful, amazing instruments. Uh, the first being this Eastman SB55 double cut, and the other being my Gibson Les Paul Special. And this ended up being much harder than I thought it was going to be. Now, here's what I mean by that. Normally, when I compare two guitars, I kind of make it as simple as a tone challenge. I play each one and say, hey, in the comments below, pick your favorites. And while sound is very much important, it's only one aspect of the overall experience of the instrument, and it's quite easily changed, whether through amps, pedals, or just swapping out pickups. But the guitar remains. Now, before I get into what those two things are, and before I get into the actual tones, of the instruments themselves, I wanna answer some questions that people have been asking me <laughs> about these two guitars in particular. The first one was, of course, price. Now, the Gibson retails for $15.99, the Eastman retails for $15.38. You can get them for substantially cheaper than that, but they're going to be fairly close in price. Uh, I got this one for $1,100, and I got the Eastman for $1,170, if I remember correctly. So very, very similar in price. And of course, the natural reaction is like, well, why wouldn't I just get the Gibson then? It's an American-made guitar. Like, if that seems like a way better deal. Okay, uh, I get it. Like, Chinese labor is for sure cheaper. You could not make this Eastman like they make it here in the United States for that price. There's just no way. But the Eastman is a handmade custom shop level instrument for the same price as a production Gibson. So to me, in terms of value, the Eastman wins. Another common question is, are Eastmans really that good? Yeah, they're really that good. They are phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal guitars. Um, as I've said in a previous video, the way that these things are built, they're just incredible. The work on it is impeccable. They sound amazing. They feel amazing. Uh, it, they really, really are that good. And of course, everybody wants to know about the neck. How does the neck on the Eastman feel? How does it compare to the Gibson? So what I want to do is get a little bit nerdy here and give you some very real uh, dimensions that I measured uh, with calipers um, while I kind of talk about what the actual experience of them is like. Let me start with the Les Paul. This has the 50s style neck and most people equate that with giant. Baseball bat, fatty, fat, fat neck. Uh, and they're kind of right. This one, however, is a little bit different. And then this is the smallest 50s style Gibson neck that I've ever played on a Les Paul Special. And obviously I haven't played every Les Paul Special in the world, but I have picked up five or six of them in various shops. And this neck carve is just a little bit different. Um, it's a little bit shallower. So it's not quite the baseball-ish type of experience. And for me, um, it's just the perfect neck carve for what I like. It's, it's just perfect. Now in terms of the Eastman, it's not a slim taper neck, but it is a little bit wider and a little bit thinner. It does feel more like say an SG type of neck than it does a Les Paul Special, but it's not a slim taper either. So at both the nut and the 12th fret, uh, the Eastman is about 8 tenths of a millimeter wider than the Les Paul Special, uh, and it is a little bit thinner. So in terms of the actual playing experience, what does that mean? For me and the shape of my hands and what I like and all that stuff, I know this is subjective, but when I play, say, my Les Paul Special, I really feel the neck kind of in my whole palm. It just sort of sits there. Whereas with the Eastman, because it's a little bit thinner and the way that the shoulders feel a little bit different, I feel most of the pressure of the Eastman kind of right here on my thumb pad and just a little bit into my palm. And there's a more of a gap kind of right here. And then of course, there's the question of versatility, meaning why in the world would you buy a single pickup guitar? You're giving up all those other tonal options. You're giving up so many other sounds. You're giving away that bell-like sweetness of a neck pickup and someone asked me can you make this pickup sound like a neck pickup so let's give it a whirl all right here's the neck pickup on my les paul special it's out of tune already but it's the g string sure enough
So which guitar wins? And I know that's a stupid question because there is no such thing and so much of this is subjective, but I'm just gonna use the terminology anyway. Now, as I said before, in almost any category I can think of, the Eastman wins. It is by far the nicer instrument in every aspect. It is just damn near perfect, but, but, and by the way, just because the Eastman is amazing doesn't mean that the Gibson sucks. I love this guitar, but the Eastman's just better. It just is, except for those two things that I want to talk about now. The first one is the neck carve. And to me, that is the thing that defines my experience while playing the guitar the most, because that is what is primarily in my hand. It's where I move the most. And for me, that experience ends up being more often than not paramount. I can change the sound. I could put Lala pickups in this guitar and it would sound phenomenal, which I'm probably going to do by the way later on. But in terms of that whole thing where I said earlier where the guitar remains as a whole, as a whole experience, the guitar remains no matter what kind of pickups or it sounds like. And for me, I love this neck carve. I absolutely love it. So even though the Eastman is far and away the better instrument, I just would rather hold this one more. And as for the second reason, I know I'm going to catch flack for this. I know I am, but it says Gibson on the headstock. I can't help it. <laughs> I like stories. I like history of things. I like that Gibson is an American icon. I like that the people that have made music that just made me go, what the hell was that? played Gibson guitars. Like if Jimmy Page had walked out on stage with an Eastman guitar, I'd probably feel that way about Eastman. But the fact remains that there is a very long storied history of that name on this headstock and I can't change the fact that that means something to me. And as this way too long video comes to a close, uh, who wins? Which guitar wins? You know, which, which one would I pick? And honestly, I've decided that I win. <laughs> because I have both of them and I get to play both of them. Uh, it's an amazing experience. You know, there's no, there's no loser here and I'm not talking about the participation trophy award type of thing going on. Gibson made a phenomenal instrument. Eastman made a phenomenal instrument at a price you just almost can't even believe uh, when you look at what they actually do to produce their guitars. So in terms of, you know, which guitar wins, they both have their strengths. They both have a couple weaknesses. The only thing that I can say for sure is that I'm going to be changing the pickups in this guitar because that Lawler P90 completely changed the way that I hear the Gibson P90s um, and these come up quite short. So I'm going to be doing something that that will be a later video. Um, I hope you found this helpful. If you have more questions, by all means, ask. Uh, I can't get to everything in every video, otherwise they'd be even longer than this one. Um, but I always do my best to, to answer whatever questions people have. Now, go play guitar. <laughs>